The time is 15 seconds before 11 o'clock, and here is the news from the WOR newsroom. American warplanes have expanded the air war over North Vietnam with the bombing of five previously untouched targets near the heart of the port city of Haiphong. Four of the new targets, one of them only a mile and a half from Haiphong's center, are shipyards used to repair the enemy's fleet of supply junks and barges. The fifth target is a massive storage complex. U.S. bombers also zeroed in on a radar site near the Kien An MiG base, eight miles south of the port city. Senate Democratic Majority Leader Mike Mansfield sounded a warning tonight. He noted U.S. jets are striking within 30 seconds of Red China's border. He said the war must be brought to an honorable conclusion soon, warning to make light of the danger of war with China would be the height of irresponsibility. In Hot Springs, Arkansas, a critic of the administration's Vietnam policies, J. William Fulbright, hurled a charge at Secretary of State Dean Rusk. The Arkansas Democrat accused Rusk of carrying on a McCarthy-type crusade against people opposing the Vietnam War. The controversy continues. Is the revolutionary leader, Ernesto Che Guevara, really dead? The Bolivian army says yes, and that his body has been cremated. U.S. officials were reported today to have received what they consider positive proof that this is the truth. But Guevara's brother, Roberto, has just returned from Bolivia, and he says the guerrilla killed by the Bolivian army was not his brother. New York's Governor Rockefeller today asked his supporters to stop trying to win him the 1968 GOP presidential nomination. But the supporters said they were going ahead, and the governor's request did not change our position at all. Rockefeller said he felt that if his backers pushed him into the race, it would be divisive and destructive and defeating for the party and the nation. The New York, New Jersey Waterfront Commission is aiding a police investigation of the Newark Tavern killings of three men earlier today. All three had been shot to death gangland style. Two of the victims were brothers of Vincent Colucci, secretary treasurer of Local 1235 of the International Longshoremen's Union. Colucci attended a Waterfront Commission conference yesterday that ended a four-day work stoppage in Port Newark over seniority hiring rights. The slain Colucci brothers were 35-year-old Patsy of Parlin, New Jersey, a one-time hiring boss for the Marr Steve Doring Company of Newark, and 41-year-old Nicholas of Hillside, New Jersey, a former Longshore Union member who worked for the California Packing Company of Newark. Police identified the third victim as 36-year-old Peter Martello of Bloomfield, a part-time owner of, a part owner, that is, of Club 309, where the shootings took place. In sports, top-ranked Southern California staged a strong second-half drive to defeat Notre Dame 24-7 in one of the nation's major collegiate football games of the day. Locally, undefeated Wagner of Staten Island moved a step closer to the Eastern Small College title with a 54-7 romp over Trenton State. Columbia was pasted by Harvard 49-6, and C.W. Post was defeated by Indiana of Pennsylvania 32-24. In some of the top games in the East, there were these scores. Cornell 47, Princeton 13. Dartmouth 23, Penn nothing. Rutgers 29, Delaware 21. Penn State 50, Boston College 28. Yale 35, Brown nothing. Navy 27, Syracuse 14. Holy Cross 17, Colgate nothing. And Villanova 41, Quantico 16. In club football, underdog Fordham battled all the way before bowing 14-8 to, to Washington of St. Louis. Iona walloped the University of Hartford, Connecticut, 35 to nothing, and Manhattan wrapped St. John's by the same score, 35 to nothing. In the National Basketball Association, the Boston Celtics opened their season by rolling over the Chicago Bulls, 105 to 90. And in the National Hockey League, St. Louis stopped Pittsburgh, 4 to 2. Montreal defeated Detroit, 6 to 2, and Toronto won over Chicago, 5 to 1. At Roosevelt Raceway, the feature race was won by Post 4 Flamboyant. And the winning daily double combination was 8 and 2, Gemini Dream and Spangler Volo. The weather forecast for New York and vicinity, mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning, becoming partly cloudy by afternoon. Tonight's low will be in the lower 50s and tomorrow's high 65 to 70. Cloudy with little temperature change tomorrow night and Monday with a chance of a few showers Monday. Chance of rain near zero tonight and tomorrow, then 10% tomorrow night. Right now in cloudy Manhattan, the temperature is 55 degrees, humidity 62%, the barometer reading 30.28 and rising, the wind from the southwest at 4 miles per hour, repeating the temperature 55 degrees. 
And that's the 11 o'clock news in brief from the WOR Newsroom. This is Russ Dunbar. Stay tuned now for more of Gene Shepard, who follows in just a moment. <laughs> 